Hey, what's up everybody? In this video tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at how to set up the IDW for the Miniature Train Project. So the first thing you're gonna to have to do is go onto iCampus and find the Miniature Train Project IDW template. You're gonna go ahead and pick on that. And once you uh, picked on that, you're gonna see that the IDW is here. So let's go ahead and pick on that to download it. And once that has been fully downloaded, you need to right click on it, go and show in the folder. And once that is showing in the folder, you're going to right click and do a copy. And now go to wherever you have saved your folder for your miniature train project and simply come in here and just paste it in. Okay, so what I recommend you do as soon as you paste it in, go ahead and do a rename. Actually put in your first last initial and um, you know, if there's anything else here at the back end of this, like a one or whatever for copies, okay, just go ahead and just do that. So it's ready and set to go. So now we can go ahead and double click on that IDW and that's gonna be opening in Inventor. Okay, all right, so we can see that the cover page has already been basically given to you. Um, and we can see that there's an icon here. Uh, we can actually come in and clean that up later. Uh, but what we want to really focus on first is to getting all of our sheets sort of created. So what I'm going to tell you to do is, is out here on iCampus is come down and find your objectives and deliverables list. And once you get there, what you need to be having in front of you is showing underneath the IDW is going to be all these different sheet names. So these are actually going to be the sheets that we are going to be creating uh, for this project. All right, so just have that ready to go, have that in front of you. Um, so it sort of makes sense of uh, what we're actually creating. So what we're gonna be doing first is, is coming in here to the cover page, you're going to right click. Okay, you're going to, um, okay, come underneath the title block here. You're going to go to field text, right click, pick on edit field text, and then actually put in your true first and last name. Okay, once you've done that and say, okay, you're now going to be seeing that your actual name is going to be down here where it says first and last. Okay, so now that that is done, now we're going to go ahead and create a new sheet. Go ahead and type in your first and last name. Project title is going to be Miniature Train Project. And now we can go ahead and say okay on that. Now the issue we have is it just simply made a duplicate Okay, of what we just had for our first sheet's name. So it's saying that that is cover page two. That's not correct. We're gonna right click, edit the sheet, and now be referencing that objectives and deliverables list. Look at your sheet names after cover page. This should be called exploded assembly with parts list. So we're gonna go ahead and say okay on that. And now we can go ahead and move on to the new sheet. So once again, you're gonna be typing in your first and last name typing in what the project's name is, which would be Miniature Train Project. Okay, saying okay. Right clicking on this, editing the sheet. Okay, and this next one would be called Axle Peg Working Drawing. We're gonna go ahead and say okay on that. Okay, let's just do this one more time just to make sure we're all good to go. So I'm gonna say first and last. Okay, our project title is going to be Miniature Train Project. We're going to say, okay, we're gonna right click on this, edit the sheet, and the next one on the list is going to be cow catcher working drawing. Now we can go ahead and say, okay. All right, so you're going to repeat that same process until you get all the way down to the bottom where it is uh, calling it uh, wheel working drawing. Okay, so I've just finished naming my last uh, you know, sheet wheel working drawing. So now what you have to understand is over here in the browser, anything that is grayed out that is currently not active. So right now we're actually looking at the wheel working drawing. So what I would do if I were you is always take a look what has just been entered into the title block. Maybe you made some sort of a, um, a spelling mistake or, or something, maybe you put something wrong in. Um, so you can always find that. If you do find an error, here's how you fix that. You're going to go ahead and expand out on the sheet, expand out on title block, and then right here where it says field text, you're gonna right click and say you want to edit the field text, and that is how you can go back into that original box. This time when you're looking at the edit, the edit property fields dialog box, you're gonna see that some of these things are basically grayed out and you're not able to actually do anything with it. Other ones are black and they're showing, you know, they're good to go. All right, the ones that are showing black over here are the only ones that you're actually able to edit. Okay, so just keep that in mind. But you can simply make the edit and say okay, and now that's going to be updated down here. All right, so the next thing you need to do is 
is start taking a look um, at the exemplar uh, that's been provided to you on iCampus. So if we go back in and look at modules, uh, and we should be able to see a working drawing exemplar. Here it is. All right, now you need to start taking a look at this. And uh, you're going to see that there are different sheet sizes that are used. So if you're able to see the entire title block across the bottom, that's an A size sheet. Uh, but if you're coming down here and you're seeing something where it is not going across the entire title or the, uh, the entire width of the sheet, that means that that is a B size. So for your exploded assembly uh, and parts list, that needs to be a, a B size. And if we keep scrolling down, it looks like everything is A except for train body. That's another B size. Okay, but otherwise, that's kind of it. So what this means for you is, in Inventor, you need to come to your exploded assembly with parts list. You're going to right click and pick on edit sheet. And now you're gonna be switching that from an A to a B size and say, okay. All right, so now we can see it's a much larger uh, sheet. That's a 17 by 11. And then also come down here to train body, right click, edit that sheet. And now you're gonna be switching this from an A to a B size. Okay. All right, so let's talk about how we bring views in. So for example, um, our axle peg working drawing, um, let's say we want to just make a very simple working drawing of that. All right, so what you would do is, is you'd come up and go to base view. You're gonna begin your drawing window, or I'm sorry, your drawing view uh, dialog box. You need to come out here and open an existing file, look inside your mentor train folder, and come down and find the part um, that you would uh, like to bring a, a view in, okay? So um, I think on the first one, I can't remember what I just said. That's axle peg. So I'm going to come and find my axle peg. I'm going to pick on it and say open. And now we can see that axle peg is actually here in this window. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just show you. You do have the ability to use the view cube, so you can spin it. Okay. You can actually change the view if, if you would like to. Uh, but otherwise, you know, you can basically make all your changes right here. What you can also do is come over here and change the scale of this. So I'm going to say I want to bring this up to, I don't know, I think four to one is a little bit big. Let's just say three to one. Okay, that's looking pretty good for us. Okay, so I can go ahead and create that three to one. All right, now what I can do is I can change the style. So the first one, we can see that it's going to be showing hidden lines. The second one is saying that it wants the hidden lines removed. And the third one means it's going to be shaded. So it's going to look like it does in real life. On any sort of multi-view drawings, okay, the front top right side view, those are all going to be showing um, hidden lines for a good majority of the time. So we're just going to go ahead and leave it right where it's at. And now <clears throat> I'm not picking anything, but you can see how I now have the option to create a new view. So right now, all right, it's wanting to uh, create that top view. So if I pick it, we can see that that top view comes in. And if I were to come over here, you can see a much larger view. All right, that's going to be my isometric. And if I come over here and pick, that's going to create my right side view. Now I can go ahead and say, okay. Since my front view and my right side view are duplicates, it means I can delete this one. So if you want to delete a view, you can go ahead and just simply pick here on the fence, hit delete, and it's going to be deleting that view. All right, what we can also do is come up here and change the visual style of the isometric view. All right, so this isometric view is what the human eye actually sees. So we want that to be shaded. So I can go ahead and say, okay. All right, now that is correct. All right, it's also a little bit big in my mind. So if we double click it, we can also come over here and change this to like a two to one and say, okay. And if we need to move this view, once again, come to the fence, you're gonna see that icon and you're able to move that up. Okay, otherwise now we are ready to go to begin dimensioning this, all right? And dimensioning is actually pretty simple. You can come up to annotate and now you have the ability to do some dimensioning here, all right? And you can start applying the dimensions to that view. All right, just know at any point in time, all right, it's gonna be following the uh, theory of orthographic projection. So if we were going to come over here and move the front view, we're gonna see that that top view moves with it. Okay, if the right side view is still there and we can make it there real quick. Okay, it is also going to be moving, okay, with the front view. The front view is something we call the parent view, all right? The, uh, the top and right side view in this case are considered to be children, so they're always going to be um, basically doing whatever their parents are doing and behaving, okay, the rules or the, the actions that you have with the parent view. All right, so last thing with this is when we originally brought this view in, it's a three to one scale, all right? So we need to make sure that that drawing scale is here. 
Okay, if you notice from the beginning, uh, when you were going and putting in your name in the project title, okay, under um, on, on that same box, you're gonna see a drawing scale was one of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type in three to one. I'm gonna say okay. And now we can see that that drawing scale of three to one is now officially down there, okay, in that title block. All right, so that's sort of the ins and outs of getting the drawing set up. That's how to change your uh, sheet sizes from A's to B's. That's how to also uh, create a very, very simple and easy uh, multi-view drawing uh, and also including uh, that isometric view. All right, so that's really it on the IDW setup for the Miniature Train Project.